Only we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, His Name Was Whittle, a warm-hearted comedy which revolves around a tall fellow from Tennessee named Jonas B. Whittle. It's the always amazing story of the change from rookie to soldier, as proudly we hail the men of the United States Army. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment, but first, today your rapidly expanding United States Army needs intelligent young men with ability and ambition. Men intelligent enough to recognize the vital need for a strong armed force. Men with ability enough to be trained in a necessary job. Men with ambition enough to secure the future for themselves and their loved ones. Well, now tell me, fellas, does this description fit you? Can you qualify for full information on how you can fit in with the finest? You check with your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Team up with the Army, and you're going to team up with success. And now the first act of His Name Was Whittle. <laughs> Just maybe I'll live to be a hundred. Could happen. But even if I do, one thing's for sure. I'll never forget Jonas Whittle. Oh, no. Not in 200 years. I better take it from the beginning. Spring 1945. There was I, Sergeant Mark Brannan, back from the war. The big war. I had a lot of experience, a slight limp that was healing fast, and a new duty assignment. I guess we could start from the moment I called the roll that first morning. Weber? Here. Whittle? Brazant. Oh. Brazant. <laughs> See him with Brazant. What's your name, soldier? Uh, who, me? Yeah, you. What's your name? Brassett. Cliff Brassett. Well, let's hold down the wise track, Brassett. Okay. Now, you, you're Whittle. Jonas B. Yes, sir. Sure does sound military, don't it? Rated off backwards that way, I mean. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, look, Whittle, from now on, in roll call, you can just sound off with here when your name is called instead of present, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was just the way Miss Meidel told me back home. How's that? Well, Miss Meidel, she'd holler out Jonas Whittle, and I was to holler back present. I see. Of course, I was just in the fourth grade. That was all the father we had to book for. See, see uh, it wasn't exactly a school, what you'd call uh-huh. it. just Miss Myrtle, a nice little widow lady that used to instruct us. Yeah, oh, okay, right. Look, Whittle, stick around after formation. I'd like to talk to you. Yes. And Whittle, you don't call sergeant, sir. Just officers, yes. huh? Ah, <laughs> sergeant. <laughs> You'll catch on. How where was I? Oh, yeah. Wiley? Present. <laughs> okay, wise guy, knock it off. Youngerman, A.R. Youngerman. After formation, I asked Whittle to drop by my room on the top floor of the barracks. Ah, well, here we are. This sure is nice, Sergeant. You have me up for visit like this. Seems right nice to get into a room with just room for a couple of people. <laughs> Not that I don't like being in the barracks with all the fellas, but. Where I come from, you wouldn't find that many folks in one spot unless somebody's barn was on fire. <laughs> Just where is it you do come from, Whittle? Oh, up in the Cumberland Plateau country, Sergeant, Tennessee. Uh-huh. Uh, me and my ma and Uncle John uh, live at the bottom of Teacup Valley. Teacup Valley? Yeah. Well, you see, she, uh, she's she got a circle of bluffs clear around her, and down in the bottom where we live, it is sort of <laughs> like living in a big teacup. See, my great-great-granddaddy Whittle, he named it. There's a town down in there, you mean? Huh? Well, well, not 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 really what you'd call a town. Just about uh, 40 or 50 folks sort of scattered around. Raise a little corn and vegetables, maybe a couple of hogs and a cow, and get along pretty good if the frost don't don't come too early. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
Well, what I really wanted to talk to you about was this schooling you mentioned at roll call. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, see, Miss Myrtle, she done her best to see that all the young has got in some reading and writing anyhow, and a little of the numbers, you know, arithmetic and like that there. Whittle, uh, hey. how'd you like to go ahead with your schooling? Go ahead? You mean, you mean get some more instruction? That's just what I mean. We've got a thing in the Army called USAFI. That stands for United States Armed Forces Institute. Oh, that, that sounds too fancy for me, Sergeant. Hmm? Gee, I'm awful ignorant. Like I said, I reckon I got schooled in for Miss Myrtle Amanda to deal about the fourth grade, but that's all. Well, don't let the big name scare you. You do this schooling on your own time, by mail. Uh, how's your reading? Well, I don't read real fast, but I was pretty quick at learning, Miss Myrtle used to say. And every night after supper, I used to read the Bible to Ma and Uncle John. Okay. I'm going to see about getting you set up to take some of these courses. Then when this training cycle is over, you'll be all set to begin. Golly dang, Sergeant Brand, it sure is nice of you taking all this interest. I haven't done anything yet. The next few days were pretty hectic. Getting a training cycle started is always a full-time job. But I did make time to get a set of qualification tests for the Asafi courses for Jonas. He took them, mailed them off, working at night after training. Well, I guess you've started to get the picture. Jonas Whittle was no ordinary trainee any way you looked at him. And it didn't take the guys in the barracks long to latch onto him for laughs. Brassard was the spark plug for the rest. It was one trick after another, things like short-sheeting Jonas's bed, uh, replacing the water in his canteen with sand before a hot march. Real cute little ideas. As for Jonas, it didn't seem to bother him much on the surface. He went ahead reading his book every morning and gradually making new friends. Some of the men began to seek him out for the simple reason he was fun to be around. They didn't stop laughing, but they stopped laughing at him and started laughing with him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happened there, Jonas, after you got to the city? Well, well, this, this recruiting fellow down in Chattanooga, <laughs> a hammer, though, are we? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, he, this fellow, he got to razzle me a little bit after uh -huh. I signed up. Uh -huh. He asked me where I live, and I told him Peacock Valley. <laughs> and, and he said? Well, he said, wasn't that up in the Cumberland country? And I said, yes, it was. Yeah. So he said, he said, well, according to the last census, the women predominate up in that region, that right? Sure like to use them long words, predominate <laughs> yeah. and like that. Yeah, well, well, would you tell him? Well, I'll tell you the straight truth about it. Come here, come here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I didn't know what that word meant, predominate, see, so I played it safe. I told him, well, sir, I can't say about all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, I don't see, I don't see what's so funny, but that, that, that <laughs> fellow in Chattanooga seems to enjoy it right much himself. <laughs> Okay, okay. I hate to break this up, but you guys better get those rifles put together. Lights out in 15 minutes. All righty, we just finished the show. How are you coming, uh, Sergeant Brandon? Okay, Jonas, how's it with you? Oh, everything's fine. Looks like you collected quite an audience, huh? Well, you know, they, they like to hear about the mountains, and I like to hear about the big cities and our west and all. Mm -hmm. Make the time go when you're watching. Yeah. Time sure has been hustling along. We're due for a two weeks' bivouac next week. That ain't some more of the shots of the needle, is it, <laughs> No, no, John. No, this is a French word means we're going to spend a couple of weeks in the woods practicing what we've been learning all this time. Well, that, that sure sounds fine, Sergeant. I'm, I'm learning lots of things. I believe I like that pretty good. I always did like camping. Camping, he called it. To a lot of the other men raised in cities, the first few days of bivouac were a nightmare. They heard noises in the bushes, everything from tigers to elephants. And every root they stumbled over in the dark felt like a snake. But to Jonas Whittle, it was like coming home to a familiar house. This was where he shone. And I put him in charge of a squad for the three-day battle maneuver that came at the start of the second week. He was having the time of his life. Well, well you repeat that so I can check it, Sergeant Brown. Yeah. You take the squad to map coordinates X-22 and C-13. You take a good, quiet look around and come back to report anything you find. Got it? Right. Are you sure you know how to find those map coordinates? Well, I got my compass and all. I reckon we'll be all right. Okay, okay. You better move out then. You'll do back in two hours. Okay, Sarge. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay. 
Hey, Wally, hold him up here a minute. Right. Hold it up, you guys. What's up, Jonas? I just want to get it straight in my mind where we're going. I thought you told Brennan you understood the whole thing. Well, I do pretty well, but these numbers just sort of rattle around loose in my head till I want to get them tied together with what the ground looks like. Oh. I think we better take a reading with the compass. Uh -huh. How's it look? Well, okay, I guess. No feel just right some way, but I reckon the compass knows more about the direction than I do. Come on this way and keep it quiet. Okay. All right, move out. Quiet. Jonas? What? Where the heck are we? We ain't there yet. Well, I know that. Where are we, though? You want straight back? Yeah. What do you mean? I just be dog if I know where we are. What? Well, from the compass reading, we should have come to Big Gully by now. No. We haven't. That moon's coming up makes it look bad. How do you mean? Well, either the moon is coming up in the north tonight for change, or we are sitting right in the middle of someplace we purely ought not to be. Well, where do you figure we are? I'd say just about two miles in the middle of enemy territory, more or less. Oh, you're kidding. Hey, you're kidding. Wish I was. You don't know what could have gone wrong with that company. Oh, no. Randall will skin us alive. To say nothing of the captain. You are listening to the proudly we held production of His Name Was Whittle. And we will return in just one moment for our second act. Ask anybody what they want most out of life, and the great majority of the answers can be boiled down to just one word. That one word is happiness. Well, now, happiness is a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but basically, I guess you might say that it's the achievement of your goals. To be happy is to be successful in whatever you do. And in today's highly specialized world, training is the key to success. If you're a young man of service age, you can get free training worth thousands of dollars by enrolling now in your United States Army's new Reserve for You training program. Under this plan, you can enter the course of your choice and be trained in such interesting fields as X-ray operations, photography, automotive maintenance, and communication. In all, there are over 150 courses to choose from. So for complete information on how you can benefit from this program, visit your local United States Army recruiting station. Remember, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. And now the second act of the proudly we held production, His Name Was Whittle. Look, Jonas, maybe you made a mistake. Now, you could have made a mistake, couldn't you? I'm sure I'm sorry, Wiley, to got you all into this. I just trusted the compass and something is purely wrong with it. Golly. Dang. Well, what do we do now? Well, there's a road right down there. See that white place in the moonlight? Yeah. So? Well, reckoning from the direction of the moon and how far we've come, I think I know where we are pretty well. Yeah? It ain't too good, but if we're real careful, see, mm -hmm. and follow that road, we might slip back without anybody seeing us. You really think so? It's about all we can do. You get the rest in line and follow me close now. Okay. All right, you guys. Now, now stay close. And for heaven's sake, be quiet. Okay. Hold on a minute. Stop by the road here. Yeah, I want to listen. You hear anything? I can't. Are you talking in my ear? You hear that? Hear what? Some kind of vehicle coming. Get them fellas back in the bush. Okay, you guys. Back up. And get down flat. Not a sound. Coming right down the road. It's a weapons carrier. On here, driver. Uh oh. Just wanted to take another look at the map by the headlights. Phew. You don't suppose he's lost too, do you? Yeah, that must be the turn just ahead. The Colonel's command post should only be half a mile or so down the left fork. Well, Captain, sir, if you're going to be there by L300, I'll Don't worry, worry, Corporal. This briefcase will be in the Colonel's hands a good two hours before daylight. When I carry a battle plan, it gets there on time. 
I'm sure sorry, Captain, but I reckon what? you're going to be a little late this morning. Oh, who's there? I don't either. You move out of the headlights, sir. You all are captured. Uh, begging your pardon, sir. Now, look here. Where are you? Come out of the shadow. Yes, sir. Mella, you and the rest are around the vehicle. All right. There ain't a better use to say you're not the enemy now, Captain, because I can tell by that doohickey on your helmet that you all are aggressive troops. So you'll just have to come along with us. You're captured fair and square. But I've got... That is, I, I'm on my way to an important mission, yes, soldier. Sir. Yes, sir. I heard you all talking about it, and I hate to mess up anything you had planned, but we've got to be getting back, and it'll make a, make it a whole lot better if we bring you in with us, you and that uh, briefcase you got there. What do you mean, make it better? Well, see, uh, us coming back with prisoners and maps and all, why, Sergeant Brandon, he won't mind so much that we got lost. Lost? Oh, no. Captured by a bunch of lost trainees. Well, sir, don't feel too bad. Could have happened to anybody. Well, guess we better get moving, though, before anybody else comes along. I'm mighty glad you all was riding in a weapons carrier. I... Well, sure, it would have just been mighty crowded with all of us if you just had a jeep. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, sir. Okay, Mella, load him up. And that was the way they came back. Whittle riding up front, getting down to present his prisoners at the company command post. Fouled up the whole enemy plan for the rest of the maneuver. So Jonas Whittle was a hero, as he put it by mistake. Well, you see, Sergeant Brandon, it wasn't really to our credit at all what it was. We was lost. Tell you the truth, I think the rail credit ought to go to Brasser. Brasser? I don't get it. Well, if you take a look at this here compass, huh? the one I was using on the patrol. Well, let me see. Well, I don't see anything the matter. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. This thing's cockeyed. You betcha just turn it over and pry up that back cover. Yeah. Hey, what's this? Well, I... This little old chip off a dime store magnet. Yeah. But it sure put us in the woods. What is it between you and Brasser, Whittle? He's been on your back ever since the cycle started. I don't rightly know, Sarge. I reckon he just got to play tricks on somebody, and me being sort of different, I guess I was elected. Yeah, but this guy doesn't know when to stop. I'm going to have to give him the word. Well, sure would be a lot better if you could hold off, Sergeant. Hmm? You know, sort of between him and me. Okay. But you're sure a bullheaded hillbilly. Coming from you sounds like a compliment. Oh, if you're so smart, Brassard, what are we doing on this chicken detail? Oh, you can't win every time, Weber, you know. Like the man says, the best laid plans, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that big laugh you were pulling on Whittle last night? Oh, you mean the uh, compass bit? Yeah, I mean the compass bit. Well, you got to admit it was a terrific gag. It uh, just didn't work, that's all. He ought to pay you to pull gags on. A couple of more like that, and they'll make him a general. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I got one for tomorrow that'll really slay you. Huh? Will you hear this one? Yeah, I tell you, sometimes I'm so smart, it, 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 it scares me. Yeah, I know the feeling. So what's the gag? Sit down a minute. We're due for a break anyhow. But Brandon said get this finished. So we'll finish later. All right, all right. Let's hear the gag. Okay, look. Tomorrow we got a fire on a mortar range, right? That does it. I'm not fooling around with any high explosives for no matter how many laps. Oh, no, no, wait a second. Wait. Look, first we make dry runs with uh, dummy rounds. Yeah, so? So, tomorrow, you and me and some of the guys, we make sure we get in the same crew with Whittle, see? And then the first... Huh? Uh, hey, what's the matter with you? I thought I heard something. Twig snapping. Nah, I'll take it easy, Weber. Take my word. The sergeant's somewhere taking it easy with a cup of coffee from the mess tent. Do you hear a rabbit or something? Come on, relax. Go ahead, put down the shovel, will you? Maybe you're right, but... No, but... But I'm trying to tell you the gag. So, like I say, we're working with Whittle, and we make the dry runs first. After comes the live ammunition. But meantime, and this is the bit. <laughs> meantime, I got a dummy around fast in the bushes. So? So, so after a couple of times with the real thing, I sneak out the dummy round, drop it in, and nothing happens. It, it, it just lays there. You, you get the picture. This is a joke. You're losing your touch. Oh, wait a minute, stupid. So then I holler, look. 
It's stuck. It'll go off any second. Here we all take... Oh, brother, I just caught up with you. Man, we should be in the next state before yeah, 10 seconds right. are on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, I told you it was terrific. I told you. What? Uh, what? What's the matter, you guys? Troubles get tired? You giving them a rest? Sarge, where'd you come from? I just walked up. Why? You got something to hide? Oh, Sarge, you can see for yourself. We're just uh, taking a break, that's all. We're all ready to go again now. All right, let's get with it then. That hole needs to be finished before chow is over. We can't throw garbage just anywhere. Oh, sure. Just uh, consider it done, Sarge. Just yeah. leave it to us. I will, I will. But if you're still in that hole come chow time, I'm going to have them throw the garbage in anyhow. So let's just keep moving, huh? Right, Sarge, right. I'll say this about Weber and Brassard. Neither one of them were very good liars, which left some hope for them. But what they didn't know was I told a little story of my own. That wasn't just a rabbit Weber had heard. I don't often eavesdrop, but when I heard them mention Whittle's name, I just couldn't resist. First, I had a good mind to warn Whittle about what they were planning. Then I got a hunch. I decided to let it ride, because the way I figured it, this might just be the time that Big Hill Billy really turned one of Brassard's tricks back on him. And I didn't want to miss it. In fact, I could hardly wait for the next morning. Brassard and company succeeded in getting on the same crew with Jonas. And after chow, we were ready to begin the live firing. I chose a spot near Whittle's mortar. I could see everything. But I couldn't quite make out what they were saying. Well, here we go, Jonas. Only this time... For real, you know? I reckon that's right. Now, just, just make sure you don't aim that thing straight up, that's all. I don't want any of these things coming uh, back down on my head, you well, know? Just you be careful handling those shells, Brassard. This here's no joke. How true, how true, how true. Well, no time like the present. Uh, you got your sights set? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Get back, Weber. Now, pull the pin and drop it straight down the pipe. There she goes. Look at that, you can see it. The question is, where is she going to hit? Hey, not bad, Jonas. About 50 yards more to the right and you're in. Uh, Sign this gadget about three clicks. That's got it now. Ready? Round two coming up. Watch out for this one, boy. Yeah, watch it now. Ready, Brass. Okay, here she comes. Now pull a pin and down the pipe. Nothing happened. She didn't fire. It's stuck in there. Get clear! It's it's gonna blow any second! Come on, come on, come on. And then it happened, just like I had a hunch it would. Jonas didn't run with the rest. He started yelling. Hey, don't run! Get down flat! Get down in the ground, I'm going in! In a single motion, Jonas scooped the mortar up into those long arms of his and started running with it, away from Brassard and the rest. Get down, I tell you! Get down! A 16 millimeter mortar is no light load, even without a dummy round inside. But Whittle's long legs were really covering ground. He ran maybe 75 yards that way, stumbling under the weight. And then finally, he dropped the mortar and hit the dirt beside him. When he dropped the mortar, the dummy round slid out right in front of his nose. Even from where we were, you could see his shoulders droop as he suddenly caught the whole picture. But the real sight of all was the faces of Brassard and the rest as it dawned on them what Whittle had done. Oh, for gosh sakes. Look at that big hillbilly. He really thought it was going to blow and still... Yeah. It... Yeah. He sure did. Brassard's face told the whole story for all of them. Nobody said much as he started walking slowly out to where Jonas sat beside the mortar. Hey, Jonas? Give your hand? Guess I look right foolish, huh, Brassard? You all get a good laugh? Nobody's laughing. I should have known it was a dumb around all along. Yeah, but you didn't. But the way I see it, you, you, you just... Blew yourself up to save our lousy necks. Huh? You know, I say there's some things that it's, it's better to be than smart. Look, I came out here to say I'm sorry. For all of us. I believe you mean it. I do. Okay. Give your hand with the mortar. Thank you. I shall be much obliged. <laughs> From where I stood, that pretty well wrapped it up. Like I said, Brassard had the makings of a soldier in him, and when he walked out in front of the whole company to apologize, it started to show. I never told Jonas that I'd known about it all along, and it wasn't until a week later, back in camp, that I got the rest of the story from him. Hi, Jonas. Oh, hello there, Sergeant. 
Why, you've been keeping self. Oh, I've been a little busy since we got back getting set for the next cycle. Golly dang, that's right, ain't it? The cycle's almost yeah. over. Say, hey, uh, you had any more brushes with Brassard? No, of course. Things have changed quite some in the past week. I think maybe he learned something on Bivouac. Well, you know, it's never too late to learn, so. That's right. Never. And that, that's what Miss Myrtle, that's what Miss Myrtle always used to say. She used to say, it's never too late to learn, not if you live to be a hundred. <laughs> I think I'd like to meet that lady someday. Say, maybe, maybe you'd like to come home to the valley with us when the cycle is over. <laughs> I wish I could, Jonas. Maybe sometime later. But you said us. Ah, uh, Sarge, did you know Cliff Brassett ain't got any family at all back where he comes from? No, I didn't. But it figures. That's what I thought, too. Well... Anyways, I've, I've invited him to come home with me for a visit in Teacup Valley, and he's going to do it. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, you know, a fellow ought to have some place to go. It's ought to be easy after all that. Well, that's real fine, Jonas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote home, so they'll be looking for us. Dodge, my ma makes the biggest, the whitest biscuits you ever saw in your whole life. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uncle John, he'll bring in a ham from the smokehouse. So when you come down the trail and smell that smell coming out through the window, <laughs> so I can tell you... You know your home. It sure sounds wonderful. Yeah, sure. And it'll just it'll just be autumn when we get there. The leaves on Hardwood Mountain will make you dizzy just to look at it. <laughs> and after a day or so when we get rested, why well, we'll go on down the holler to Miss Myrtle's with my books to go a calling. Yeah, yeah. Miss Myrtle, she'll be glad to meet old Brassett. <laughs> I suppose all of us at one time or another have seen the principle of strength through unity demonstrated by a handful of sticks. Now, singly, they can be broken very easily, but when bound together, well, then it's practically impossible to break them. And so it is with our America, yours and mine. Working together as a team, we can be certain that our democratic way of life will never be broken. One of the most important members of democracy's team is our United States Army a highly spirited organization that offers unequaled opportunities to modern young men and women. Today, the Army has a new career program in operation, one that permits you to choose your own course of training in the skill that best suits your aptitudes and interests. So we kind of suggest you find out about it real soon. And how do you do that? You go down to your local United States Army recruiting station and talk it over with the real friendly folks down there. Remember, there's complete information without obligation. So plan ahead. Face your tomorrow today. Team up with the Army, and you team up with success. been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army, and this is Richard Hayes speaking, inviting you to tune in to the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs> <laughs>